What is going on Diablo fans? Dabrunski here and today I'm going to be breaking down the Tell Explosion MF Necro variant build of the original Fishy Mancer build. Now, like all of my previous build videos, timestamps will be in the description below. So, if you guys want to bounce back and forth between the gear, gameplay, uh, skill tree, or attributes, they're there for you guys to use. So, please take advantage of them. But before we dive into specifics, there's three main points that I want to cover. And the first is the MF variant of the Fishy Necromancer. What do I mean by that? Well, I do have a link in the description below. It's a Diablo.net build guide on I guess the original fishy necromancer which relies heavily on corpse explosion to take out all monsters and this is just an MF variant of that build but I wanted to point out that the issue or problem that I have with saying a necromancer solely relying on corpse explosion I feel like any viable necro build heavily relies on corpse explosion whether it's the poison necromancer the bone necromancer or this summon necro or tell explosion mancer whatever you want to call it that doesn't actually use summons they all rely on getting a first kill really quickly and then corpse exploding to clear the entire room so this is just an mf variant of that particular fishy mancer build the second point that i want to touch on is the best in slot mercenary weapon for this build now my favorite thing about this mercenary is he's not funneled into using the top three standard mercenary weapons that are on 99 percent of diablo 2 mercenary builds and that is ethereal reaper's toll or insight or infinity now with that being said infinity is absolutely viable because that conviction aura does reduce enemy fire resistance and corpse explosion is 50 percent physical and 50 percent fire damage so it definitely boosts the overall potential of corpse explosions damage but anything that is fast attack speed hard hitting with a high amount of damage is absolutely viable for this build so three very cool niche unique options that come to the top of my head that are 100% viable for this build breath of the dying ethereal three open socket tomb reaver with like three ohm runes or three istrunes or an ethereal bone hue with two ohm runes or two istrunes something along that line will be very effective for this build the third and final point that i want to just briefly discuss on is where is the ideal areas to mf with this build now in my opinion it's the ancient tunnels and the pits you can explore other areas in the game like Chaos Sanctuary or World Stone Keep, but you really have to be careful that you don't lose your Iron Golem because we do have an inside Iron Golem for this particular build and it's really easy to lose him because of curses and stuff in the Chaos Sanctuary or other later end game areas. But the pits and the ancient tunnels, you can farm them very effectively, very fast and with a large amount of MF. But that really covers the three key discussion points that I wanted to talk about for this build. So now we'll dive into the specifics of this Tell Explosion MF Necro. So the first thing I'll take a look at is the attribute distribution of this Necro build. It is a max Vita setup. Now I have 195 in a strength that might seem a little high, but that is solely because of the rumored uh, beast. More on that when we go over the gear. But yeah, I definitely don't have 195 hard points in a strength. Nothing into dexterity, nothing into energy, and then everything into vitality, hence max fight a build. Now the resistances for this necro, they are a little bit low, uh, minus 27 fire, uh, 34 cold, 4 lightning, and 4 poison, but when you're farming the pits, or the ancient tunnels, or if you do a little bit like a pindle, eldritch and shank, it's not too big of a deal. You'll see more when we dive into the gear. Now. We'll just go over summoning, poison, we'll go over all three skill trees. Um, for summoning, I just have one hard point into raised skeleton and one into skeleton mastery. I don't typically use skeletons too often. Maybe if I want a little bit of extra crowd control, but you can see the build is totally viable without it. I just have them included because people seem to get really upset that I'm not using summons. Uh, one into clay golem, one into golem mastery, and one into summon resist. And then one into blood golem and one into iron golem. And this iron golem you see here, is made out of an insight room word to give us that meditation aura so we never have to worry about mana recovery that is very important poison and bone skill tree this is going to seem a little bit backwards but i have a max corpse explosion uh, just one hard point in the teeth and bone spear just to unlock bone prison and bone wall and then i maxed all three of these now you're probably like why the hell would you max bone armor bone wall and bone prison for this Tell explosion or summon necro, whatever you want to call it. And it's really because we're tele stomping boss packs 
and then casting amp damage, the mercenary gets a kill very quickly, and then we just corpse explode everything. And having a high level synergized bone armor is very helpful for just absorbing damage on players one difficulty. So it might seem like a waste, but it's not, trust me. And then the remaining points I put into amplified damage just to increase the overall curse radius. So if I tele stomp and everything's kind of scattered a little bit with the boss back as well, you just cast amp damage, you cover everything. And then as soon as we get one kill, the corpse explosion radius is so large, it'll hit everybody. And it's just, it's kind of helpful. I mean, you could put one hard point in amp damage and maybe put extra points into summons if you really want to. I think revives are a waste of time. Um, skeleton mages are useless as well. But again, that's just my opinion of this particular necro build. So like all character builds in Diablo 2, there is all kinds of gear variation that you can use to achieve the optimal build setup for you. I will cover a couple different variations, although I won't touch on everything in this video, understandably. The first point that I want to talk about is, this is a 75 FCR necro. So we achieve that through triangles, gloves, 20 FCR on Arachnid's Mesh, and then 35 FCR spirit. So 35, 20, 20, that gives us our 75 total. And you can use a 220 cast reamid if you have one with MF, uh, Arachnid's Mesh and Spirit, and then swap out Trangs for Mage Fists. You can still reach 75 and stack even more MF, which I will show some of that gear in my stash. But on Switch, CTA and Spirit, I have Perfect Topaz Shaco, Enigma, two Nagel Rings, 49 MF War Travelers, and then an entire inventory of 7 MF Small Charms, the 40 MF Geeds, and then a Torch and Annie. So that gives us 75 SCR and stacks a whole whack load of MF. And the Mercenary, I touched on this at the beginning of the video, we want a hard hitting Merc that does a lot of damage. So I have Fortitude, Endario's Visage, and this Ethereal Double Ohmed Bone Hue for style points, 414 ED. It's really kind of a flex. You can use any other type of hard hitting weapon. You just do not want cold damage. And if you can achieve it, a source of cannot be frozen is optimal for like a top tier mercenary setup because if you tele stomp a boss back and then he's frozen and he can't attack quickly, it's just going to slow down his damage output. So ideally you'd want something like a Chammed Endario's Visage, but I haven't made that move yet. We're just rocking this Endario's Visage with a rare jewel in it that has a little bit of ED to demons and fire resistance. But talking about alternative gear options, again, there's a lot to cover. So you can use Infinity on the Mercenary if you want for that Conviction Aura to reduce fire res. It's going to increase your overall damage output. You can use a 6 to Crystal Sword that adds 180 additional MF at the expense of the Fanaticism Aura that helps your Mercenary hit harder and faster. So it's up to you if your personal preference, like if you want a little bit more MF or having your Mercenary attack a lot quicker, you'll have to make that decision yourself but you do add a lot more MF with the Crystal Sword. You can drop a Tomb of Town Portal for two more MF Small Charms if you want to farm one specific area over and over again. Again, that's up to you. Or like I mentioned earlier, 20 FCR Amulet with MF. I lose two Necro Scales, but then I can swap out Chance Guards. So that actually is a loss of four to Curses and two Necro Scales total, but that's not really the end of the world but I can still hit 75 FCR and stack even more MF. So this setup here has a total of 731 MF. Uh, if I swap out Beast, use different Castry Amulet and Trang's Gloves, I have a little bit less, 516, or we can use Trang's, this Amulet with the two skills, swap out the Six Sister Crystal Sword, something like that for just under 700 MF. So really, it's up to you how you want to break everything down, but that pretty much covers everything with the exception of just got to talk about the Iron Golem. He is an insight rune word that was turned into an Iron Golem for that meditation aura because they don't want to have any issues with mana recovery, but that covers the gear in its entirety with different MF variations depending on how you want to tailor your setup. So we'll do an Ancient Tunnels, Pit Run, and Pindle Run. We'll do it on Players 1 with the Six is to Crystal Sword, and then we'll switch to Beast. We'll do another player's one run, and then we'll switch to player's three, and we'll swap out the Mercenary's weapon for Infinity. And you guys can see all three different variants uh, running different difficulties. You can kind of get a feel for what this uh, summon, Tele Explosion, Necromancer 
MF variant of the fishy necromancer is all about. So for the first run, just to show you guys, it'll be with the six Istrid crystal sword. So more MF, but the mercenary is obviously going to be doing less damage because of no beast. Now, typically I don't actually use summons with this setup, but just for the sake of showing you guys, we'll go to Pindle, because that is the place to get them. Might as well do a quick Pindle run while you're at it. So amp damage. Get the first kill, then we're good to go. Corpse explode the room, rinse and repeat. That is the idea behind the build. Now we'll go to, just to make sure we're on players one. Yeah, players one. Do pits, in ancient tunnels with the uh, crystal sword and then we'll switch to beast. You'll see that the mercenary attacks a little bit quicker. There's more damage. And then we'll do an infinity round on a higher player difficulty setting, and hopefully, we we'll not have to deal with any archers. So that is the idea behind this build: amp damage to cover everything. Mercenary build, or mercenary, excuse me, gets a kill as quickly as possible, and then we corpse explode and rinse and repeat. That's all that there is to it. Oh, that was a champion. No champion there. It is good to keep up on your bone armor though. I'm gonna help absorb some of the physical damage from Tally Stomping. Check these Sin Claws. Crap. There's your pit run in the book. Players one. Do AT very quickly. This is kind of my typical standard MF route. Pits, Ancient Tunnels. Do some Pindle if I want to get summons. This is about it though. Super effective, we have just over 700 MF. I could have even higher than that if I swapped out the Castry Amulet and used Chance Guards. Depending on how you want to tailor the build. Or your magic finding needs. I'd rather actually use Beast, which you'll see. I feel like you can tell like a noticeable difference in how quickly the Mercenary gets the first kill using the rumored Beast. That is our Ancient Tunnel run. Players one with the Six Sister Crystal Sword, so we'll just swap out Where Beast for the Fanaticism Aura. And lastly, we'll do the higher difficulty run with Infinity. Oh. You can do Eldritch and Shank, actually, but we'll just go get some summons again. Handle run. 220. No 220 Javas and Gloves. Next time. Do bits. You always do the pits first and then do Ancient Tunnels second. You can kind of use that War of Trick. To speed up cycling the new game. But I really do think. exception of getting hit with mana burn. The mercenary does get the kill quicker using the rumored beast. It is, of course, at the expense of MF. But since this build is ultimately about or exploding the room, I think it's better off to use beast get that kill quicker. You just see, like, you literally just obliterate everything. Ooh, Sinister Tracks, F. Oh, that would have been nice for a build video. 10, 14, non F. Imagine if those were F Treks. And that would have been nice. But we're only targeting champions and boss packs, focusing on them specifically. We have 
obliterate the entire room. Okay, T run. And then we'll do the players three. More loot using infinity to get that conviction aura to boost the potential of corpse explosion. Show you guys all three different variants. You should just watch. We have four lightning resistance, so just pay attention to the mages. It's not too big of a deal, but you also probably can't sit there and stomp and absorb their damage all day either. You can if you're going to MF everywhere. You could probably switch out like the amulet for Mara's, a couple res small charms. Would count for that, but since this is just purely focused on MF, let's kind of deal with it. There's not too many builds that actually fully max out resistances anyways. Be all running the sorceress, I will. For builds like this, I don't think you have to. Expand in. No, one open socket. One arc. There we go. That is the beast run. And then we'll finally just swap out the mercenary's weapon so you guys can see infinity on the merc on a higher player difficulty setting. You'll probably notice an increase in the corpse explosion damage because it will be a lot more effective. We're going up a higher player difficulty setting, but it'll be just as good or arguably even better. But I'm going to stick with beast though. I don't like using the crystal sword with uh, higher player difficulty settings. Players three. Couple summons. Players one, I don't think you have to worry about it. I just think it's a waste of time. Getting summons. Do a pit run. Hopefully you don't get toasted by archers. That's my biggest struggle with this necro is despite skeletons or bone armor, tele stomping, I just archers are just disgusting. I feel like they're the bane of the necro. Playing on player seven, poison necro. I hate them and I hate them just as much with this build. You could ultimately put some points into revive if you wanted to on higher player difficulty settings. Then that'll help tele stomping. Characters. Yeah, it's up to you. I don't think you need it though. Back that I missed. No. I can't carry any. As soon as the first kills off, we're all good. Archers. Tally stomp them. Circle it. Do the cold skills. Else. And then we'll wrap everything up with AT. Same idea. Except on players three with that boosted infinity damage. These guys in the Vaders have that very high fire resistance. Infinity does break it though, which helps make that corpse explosion a little bit more effective, guys. Oh. 
careful there. I am overburdened. Hide your bow. Wouldn't that be cool getting wind force? Go video. That guy has a holy fire aura. And we do have negative fire res, so it is one thing to watch out for. And that is all she wrote, guys. So we went over crystal sword setup and B setup on players one with using an alternative mercenary weapon like double ohmed Bonio. Then you got to see players three, Pindle, Pits, and AT with an infinity mercenary setup. Ultimately, it's up to you what uh, you decide to run on your mercenary and like what player type ability setting you want to uh, play this Necron. But I think players one is best with Beast. Again, that's my personal preference. But I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. It gives you an idea of trying a not so traditional summoning necro setup to magic find with. Uh, but yeah, guys, if you could throw a like on this video, uh, share it, and you consider subscribing if you're new to my Diablo 2 channel. I post new weekly content and stream on a consistent basis, so there's always new stuff to look forward to, and your support with a sub would mean a lot. Other than that, guys, hope you have a fan freaking fantastic day, and I'll see you on my next Diablo 2 video or live stream. Peace out. Yeah.